All right, welcome back to Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls in what we are now calling LPs with Leith, Leithy. Sometimes I can't even pronounce my own name. Um, we are going to do another episode today. Uh, you'll see that um, Nietzsche has changed in her appearance a little bit. Um, I played a little bit between the second episode and the recording of this one. And the reason why I'm recording this episode is because I've already gotten my first legendary item. And it's one which I think is really helpful to look at. It's pretty simple. You've probably all seen it. But we're going to talk about it and how it can play into sort of power leveling and, you know, just progressing forward quickly with content. All right. Um, so I'm changing as I go these video and audio settings to make sure that I get everything right. Um, I think that I've managed to cut the uh, top of the window with the name of the program in it from the recording. I think I've adjusted the audio settings a bit better so that my voice and the game sound are pretty balanced. Uh, so just let me know if there's any settings in the audio or the video that you would like me to try and change a little bit. All right, so let's get right back into the game. So you can see I'm up to level 15 now. Uh, I believe I was level 11 at the end of the last video where we went through a Nephilim Rift for the first time. And I did a Nephilim Rift yesterday, which is where I got uh, my new uh, legendary item. And it was pretty handy that I got this legendary item or else I would have had a lot more trouble finishing off the Rift boss. Okay, so what did I get? The suspense must be killing you, and you'll be able to see from these little dudes standing beside me, these fallen lunatics, that it is Nagel Ring. Um, so, Nagel Ring, the special ability is that it summons a fallen lunatic to your side every 12 seconds. Um, I think you can have up to four, maybe five, and they eventually just die on their own if you don't use them in combat, uh, they will automatically run into your opponents and explode, doing a significant amount of damage. Now, it doesn't tell you anywhere how much damage they do, if it's a fixed amount, if it's based on your weapon damage or what, but I was fighting one of my least favorite Rift bosses yesterday uh, in, the con in the content that I didn't record, uh, Escandiel, who uh, is one of the, I think they're called skeletal summoners, something to that effect, the base creature. Uh, they have um, that wave that they put out in front of you which will hit you, knock you back, and slow you. They summon, or Escandiel summons skeletons and skeletal beasts, and then worst of all, he has arcane enchantment. He is a real pain to deal with, and one of my least favorite rift bosses. I think he's not challenging in a fun way, I think he's just really obnoxious. Um, it's particularly bad for a low-level character to deal with, and I was in a dungeon tile setting, so there wasn't a lot of space to move around. So those arcane sentries and that wave that he puts out uh, didn't leave me much room to maneuver. But thankfully, I remembered that I had a unique ring in my inventory. I ran away for a bit, identified it, discovered it was Nagel Ring, and then the Fallen Lunatics helped me triumph. You can also see that I'm starting to get all of my skills unlocked. Um, my plan for further content uh, is to obviously not show you everything because that would be a bit dull. If I get a particularly good item, I'll record some gameplay of me using that item. I'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, once I get all of my skill um, slots unlocked, I'll start talking about builds. Um, but for the time being, I'm just gonna show you uh, Nagel Ring. So interestingly enough, a little piece of trivia here. Uh, my character's name is Nietzsche, obviously named after Friedrich Nietzsche, the uh, German philosopher from the late 19th, uh, early 20th century. And there is also a uh, contemporary philosopher, still alive, Thomas Nagel, who is famous also in moral philosophy. And so uh, I just found that sort of interesting that we have Nagel ring on Nietzsche here. Okay, so why do I like Nagel Ring so much? Well, let's get into a rift, do that rift, and I will show you why. So I've already said that it does a lot of damage. And the amount of damage that it does seems to be, oh, scaled Many more than is appropriate for the level at which you get it. Which means that it can help you clear 
really tough, high HP mobs uh, much more easily than you would normally be able to at a given level. So you can see what they'll do is they'll run and they'll explode and they just obliterate all of those mobs there. Run away from that. Um, hopefully the game volume is not too loud for you. It's a bit loud in my ears. I cannot hear myself talk. I'm going to turn it down for a second. It may just be loud in my headphones. All right. So you can see that the explosion of the fallen lunatics does a tremendous amount of damage. So uh, Nagel Ring is extremely helpful to get very early, and importantly, once you're done with it. Don't just throw it away. It is one of those items that you definitely want to uh, extract the power of in the uh, Cube of Kanai. Because then, when you start a new character, you can lock down that Nagel Ring ability to summon Fallen Lunatics and help you clear early content fast. Clear content which is perhaps a bit over level for you fast, and therefore power level in yourself. So, this is a perfect item for Nietzsche and her will. Uh, I wish I could say that you wouldn't hear that joke again, but you will definitely hear it again. So, yeah. um, You can see I've upped my damage a little bit here. I um, am using a two-handed sword, which I don't particularly like to do with the monk, but it actually doesn't look too bad, as you can see. It looks, uh, she looks pretty much like some kind of ancient Chinese or Japanese warrior that you see in those uh, um, old sketches of myths. She still has a slow attack speed, which I don't like, but I will deal with it until we have more control over what kind of gear we can use. So we talked about the composition of rifts before. This rift is a pretty good composition. Um, if this were a I would not be upset with what we have, except for those spiders, because as you can see, they slow you down quite a bit, and time is of the essence in the Greater Rift. All the other monsters that we've encountered are pretty good. They are very numerous, they're pretty easy to kill, which means that they contribute to our progress through the Rift pretty substantially. The worst uh, composition of enemies in Rifts are when you have a lot of different tanky type enemies that take a long time to kill because obviously you don't have that kind of time. I prefer moderate level uh, hit points and a high level of density. So I will make one comment on my build at the moment. Uh, in my passive, I have damage you deal reduces enemy damage by 20% for 4 seconds. And I think that combos really well with some of the AoE damage that I have with that bell. Because it means that I can hit a lot of characters, uh, a lot of monsters at once, and then make them do all of them less damage to me. And survivability is incredibly important in this hardcore run. Like I said before, I'm going to play this rather cautiously. Ah, we come across one of the pylons, which are special shrines that you only see in Greater Rifts and Nephilim Rifts, and they give you a tremendous boost in power or speed or some special effect for a rather short time. Notably, these are not affected by those uh, unique a item abilities, strike. which increase shrine duration to 10 minutes. So don't expect that to happen. That would indeed be very OP if you had the uh, commander type that to go around shooting lightning out of yourself for about 30 seconds. The one that I got was the Power Pylon, which increases damage that I do by 400% for the duration. It's really good to make sure that you um, use those pylons efficiently. Um, sometimes. Unless you know that you're going into a direction which has a high density of enemies or a special type of enemy, or the Rift Boss even, I would try to avoid using them. Because running around for 30 seconds attacking nothing is really good for the base of those. Arcane Dilemma. That's quite an interesting name. I love 
the strange name that uh, these rifts get. In general, the strange names that uh, rifts and uh, boss monsters get in this game, they are procedurally generated. I'm pretty sure I once... Oh, and it's not just the bosses, the, the rare and magical weapons. I'm pretty sure I once saw a weapon called Enigma Enigma, which, uh, well, I guess it's really mysterious. So, you can see I'm having a pretty easy time now. Even with the rare monsters, I haven't come close to significantly damaged at all. That's in part due to these fallen lunatics, who will sometimes pop up and you won't be able to tell that they'll immediately die, kind of like that. But they will take out a lot of my enemies' health with them. The unbedded of Goatmen are generally a pretty good enemy to see in the rift, uh, because they almost always come in large numbers. The ranged ones, these are the fears, uh, don't like to see quite as much because they do so much damage. The goatmen shun, and of course the normal goatmen are not in the top line. The blood clan ones who go to the surf or whatever it is they do, they can be problematic in large numbers, but they're still not that bad. So, the Goatmen are a good monster to see in your Rift composition. Let's see. So, um, we've gotten to see a pretty good sample of Not why I spirit. like the Nagel Ring. I'm going to take the summoning ability that comes fails. with it. I thought I heard a mortar monster around here somewhere. <laughs> So you can see we're progressing pretty quickly through this rift, um, and in part of war, you're going to have to get used to uh, doing things probably a bit more slowly than you might like to, I don't mostly because you have to be cautious. You want to build for survival rather than massive damage, because obviously you can't afford to die. But you obviously have to balance that out, or if or when we start doing greater rifts, we still have to get through them in the time to get the full benefit. So we saw a combined uh, double whammy there on my enemy of me going up a level and a fallen loot exploding, and it just wiped out that entire atmosphere uh, monster. Or, yeah, I think it was a loot You can see the difficulty of rift ramps up pretty quickly as you go up in levels. You will have more and more uh, rare monsters and elite packs more and more frequently. Let's go down here and grab this pylon. Speed pylon. It's not incredibly useful in the greater, uh, excuse me, in the Nephilim rifts. It is incredibly useful in the greater rifts. I need spirit. Because it allows you, if you happen to get lost, if you want to go to areas with more density of monsters, if you also have a constant pylon on, uh, it helps you get a lot of value out of that and clear monsters faster, building up that. Area. I was originally uh, thinking about doing this series, I had at first thought that I might do the voice of the because since I need to be a bit more cautious, I might want to concentrate more on not dying and not less enough on spirit. commentary. So far, I haven't had a problem. Um, maybe when things get a little bit hairier, uh, when I get closer to level 70 and I really don't want to die and have to start over, I might end up doing the voiceover afterwards, but for the time being, I am as I play. So that explains the occasional silences and miss, uh, miss speech. There is probably a, a more um, methodical way to explore these rifts that would be helpful to have in mind when you get to the greater rift, because again, of time constraints. Um, it can be really hard on these open maps sometimes, uh, but really, I'm not worried about it at this point in time. You can see we've already been through here. Ah. And we were just out of sight of the portal down to the third tier. I really like this um, pile set for rifts. 
it can get a little bit hairy in higher torment difficulties because of the huge density of monster little amount of space, the narrow enclosures, but the choke points can be really helpful if you have the right abilities. Um, especially if you have some kind of pet build, you can often keep all the monsters at the door and just pick away at them while your pet is still up there. Again, you can see how much value you're getting out of these fallen lunatics. There are some monster types that I trust you to jump on. I think they are challenging in an unfun and obnoxious way. Um, I encountered a number of those in the content that I did not record. Oh, and here they are right now. Oh, wait. Here's one version of them. Any enemy with. No, there they are. These winged assassins I despise. I do not think that they are fun to play against. Uh, if they have this jump ability, which they I don't can have enough fiddly use to close in, and they do damage when they land around you. It is very difficult to avoid, and they often come in large groups, and they can surround you quickly, especially when they are sometimes just a beat back. So, this is my least favorite risk boss, and perhaps second least favorite again. You can see we also have to deal with this pack of dark hellions as well. So there you can see the arcane sentries and that obnoxious color wave that I need. And already I am in big trouble here. You can see we sort of barely escaped. We're not quite out of the woods yet. Alright. So we got cornered by a summons. We had to worry about the exploding of the Dark Hellions. And once again we are getting cornered a little bit here. Luckily, we have a heal ability. Oh, oh, this is very close once again. Whew. So, I really hate Escandiel, and you can see why. The slow, combined with the arcane sentries, combined with his ability to corner youth his minions, makes him a real pain in the ass. And now I am glad that motherfucker is dead. Okay, we had a close call there. Uh, it wasn't even that close when I fought him in the last rift, which I did not record. So, you get a little bit of action here in this episode. Alright. We didn't get anything terribly good. We didn't... We're starting to get forgotten souls for crafting purposes. Um, we will, of course, need to probably do some bounties in the near future in order to get any recipes to craft. Uh, legendary recipes, uh, you most of which still won't be of any use to us the for uh, me. probably about seven more levels or so. So you can see this is still a good way going into Nephilim Rifts to level quickly. Uh, we've gone up a couple levels in the course of this video. So uh, we're going to end it there. I will look at my loot. There's probably nothing good. And then I'll come back with some more content probably in a couple more levels when I get my fourth active ability slot opened. So, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to like this video, subscribe to FWAP's channel, and remember that in January 2016, I will have my own channel with my own content, and then FWAP and I will additionally have our collaborative channel, Leak House. So, until next time, I don't care what you do.